Here at Easel Solutions, we are super excited for the new version of Captivate, uh, Adobe Captivate 6. Um, when it was released, I put out a little review on our blog, blog.easelsolutions.com. kind of went through the top features, what I thought was really important, and, and, and what makes it worth an upgrade for a lot of authors out there. The biggest feature, in my opinion, or the one that we're most excited about, is the HTML5 publishing feature. The reason this is such a huge feature is because for years, Captivate and other e-learning authoring tools have relied on Flash to deliver uh, the content because it was a great platform. The content played consistently everywhere. We had rich audio, rich video, all kinds of capabilities. However, there are a few devices out there nowadays that don't support Flash and primarily iPhones and iPads. So the ability to take your same content from Captivate and publish it as HTML5 content means that this content will play on an iPhone or an iPad. And this is huge because we can use this great authoring tool and produce content that uh, will or extend the reach of the content that we're producing. The only issue with this is that it introduces a few new paradigms and, and for a developer, uh, you know, I, may, I build mobile apps and mobile websites so I understand and am used to mobile workflows but for a lot of content authors and, and e-learning experts, they aren't used to testing on devices or building content for mobile devices. And so what you really need to do is kind of get down and dirty and test the content. You need to play with it on your device and, and see instructionally what works and what doesn't because we don't want to introduce uh, instructional obstacles for people who are on a mobile uh, device. So testing the content is what you need to do and this can sometimes be tricky because you have to either upload it to your LMS or put it on a website or copy it to the device and what I want to be able to do is publish my course to my laptop just like I do always and be able to test it directly from my laptop on my mobile device. And I'm going to show you in this video how to do that and how to get that set up. It's a little technical, but it's really not too bad. And once you get it set up, you'll, you'll, uh, you'll be on your way and you won't have to do this process again. So the first thing that we need in order to make this happen is we need to install a server. Uh, and there are lots of options for this. I'm going to show you one option and again there's one of many that you can do here. The reason we're doing this is you need to make a little server on your computer so that the, your, your, your device can see your computer on the network and it's, it's really the same way that you would uh, if you've got a learning management system or you use Adobe Connect. Uh, you, you've got a URL, you've got a, a link that you will give your device to be able to view it. Now I like to use a server called ZAMP so you can see the URL to get this. I'm going to click on ZAMP. They have Windows and OS X versions of this so whether you're using Mac or Windows does not matter. So you can see here I am going to download and install the Windows version. Now I've already done this but just to note when I installed this it was a next 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 installation. I did not customize the installation at all. As I said there's one for uh, Mac OS X as well. Um, there's other server solutions out there but again this is just a, a next 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 sort of installation. Once you've installed it you need to just start the server. So I'm going to go to my Windows button and find the ZAMP program that was installed. Uh, again, if you're on a Mac, it's just going to be in your applications. It starts up this little control panel and um, it'll sometimes start the server automatically, but if not, where it says Apache, I'm just going to click Start. And now you have a server running. Now this, this again is a little uh, confusing if you haven't done web development or anything like that, but just think of this like, like a learning management system or like just, it's, a, it's a server running on your computer locally so that a device will be able to see it. Now what I want to show you is that this was installed on my C drive. You can see the, the path here on my computer. It's installed on my C drive in a XAMPP folder. And in that folder is an htdocs folder. This is the, what we call the root folder for the server. So anything in this htdocs folder is going to be viewable by the device. And you can organize this however you want. You can see I have a 
boatload of folders in here because I do lots of different testing for different applications and, and environments. I've got all kinds of demos that I've done. But in this folder, I've got a little CP folder. And just, I kind of named it CP, stand for Captivate. So I'll put all the Captivate content I want in here. And, and right now I have a demo folder. I'm just going to delete that for now so this folder is empty. So what I'm going to do from Captivate in a second here is publish my content into this folder and then you'll see how I will be able to uh, see this content from my mobile device. So let's switch to Captivate for a second. Here I'm in Captivate. I'm just going to make a super simple project. Um, for my project, I can pick any size that I want. You can see that if you are targeting the iPad, they have some preset sizes here. I'm just going to go 800 by 600, just kind of a normal size. I'm going to click OK. I, of course, could record a course like I could. I could use the new video demo feature of Captivate. There's lots of options that I have um, for, for creating my content. But I'm not going to get too complicated. Uh, there's lots of tutorials out there on Captivate 6 that we can, um, uh, uh, that you can look at to see the new features of Captivate 6. So I'm just going to pick a theme. Themes are a great new feature of Captivate 6. They give you some instant design and are very easy to create yourself. So I'm going with this kind of green theme and you know I'll give this a title of a uh, demo course. I'm going to add a new slide. So I'll just insert a new slide. On this slide, I'm going to put one of the super cool new uh, interactions. If you haven't checked out interactions yet, it's worth the upgrade alone into Captivate. There are all these cool widgets for showing content. I'm going to go with the pyramid. That seems pretty cool. Click insert. When you insert an interaction, there's a little configuration option. It lets you kind of pick different themes or styles for the interaction. And, uh, you know, I think I'll go with this third one here. I can come in and uh, customize some of this content, you know, make this top of the pyramid. I could go in and change all this content, although I'm not going to worry about that. I'm just going to click OK. So I've got this interaction placed in here. Um, let's end this by adding a couple quiz questions. Again, I'm not going to customize these at all. The point of this is not to uh, uh, show you how to use Captivate. It's to show you how to test some of this content. So first answer will be A, and maybe the second question, the right answer will be B. Uh, as I said, I'm not even going to customize anything here. But I have completed my course. I'm ready to publish. So I'll click File. I'll click Publish. In Captivate 6, the new option here is to be able to publish both a Flash version and or an HTML5 version. The cool thing about this is it really gives you the best of both worlds. You can, you can use the Flash version for devices that support Flash, but if the device doesn't support Flash, the code that's generated will show them the non-Flash or the HTML5 version so they can actually take whichever one is compatible for them. Uh, I'm going to call this project demo and I'm going to publish it to that folder, the XAMPP folder on my C drive, the htdocs folder, and into the cp folder. I'm going to publish it into there. So I'll click publish. My content is now published out. I can view the output if I want. And here it's plain. And of course, because I have the Flash player, I'm seeing the Flash version here. Now, what I want you to notice, look at where this is published. This is published into that server that I set, that little folder there that's running. If I go to that folder, you'll see that Captivate put a demo folder and in there all the content that makes up the course. It's pretty cool because they have the demo htm file which is actually the flash version of it they have the multi-screen version which which is the uh, the non-flash version and the index file which decides which one you're gonna see uh, and that's what's perfect about this because if you bundle this up put this in your learning management system wherever you end up putting it um, you'll be able to target both flash enabled and non-flash enabled devices now how do we test this this is the big thing 
I've got that server running. I showed you earlier how to install that and start it. What I want you to notice is that if I go to my URL here, and instead of putting this first part where I put file, C colon, XAMPP, all, all this kind of mumbo jumbo in the file here, if I replace that first part of it with HTTP colon forward slash forward slash local host forward slash. So if you notice, I've replaced the first part with local host. And local host is kind of a keyword that means your computer. Okay, it's kind of like saying, I am Dustin, that, that, that pronoun I, it, it, it's referring to me. And that's what local host is when you have a server running. So if I actually browse to this URL, I see the exact same content because it's pointing to that location where the server is installed. This is the tricky part. Your iPad or your other mobile device doesn't know what local host is because it doesn't have a server running on itself. You need it to talk to your computer. So there's two ways to go about this. The hard way and the easy way. I'm going to show you the hard way because that's the way that everyone can do. But then I'm going to show you the easy way, uh, which is the way that I recommend if, if, you can, uh, if you're using Google Chrome. So the hard way is that you have to figure out the address of your computer. So I'm going to go to my start menu and I'm going to open up a command prompt. Okay, the command prompt, which is just the CMD uh, command prompt application. If you're on a Mac, you're going to open up terminal. It's in your applications folder. I'm going to type in ipconfig and hit enter. And it scrolls down. It'll, it'll vary depending on how your computer's set up. But if I look up toward the top, I want you to notice that right here is an IPv4 address. This address right here is the actual physical location of your computer on the network. Okay, so 192.168.120.114. So, if I replace localhost with 192.168.120.114, that is the same thing. You can see that this works. And I can begin taking my course. This is the address that you want your device to go to. Now, the kicker here is your device has to be on the same network. So what I recommend is being on a Wi-Fi connection that both your laptop and your mobile device are on. If you're on the same Wi-Fi connection, this should work. Now, let me go to my device. I've got a little webcam going here so you can see the device. I'm going to open up Safari, and I'm going to type in that URL. So it was 192. Dot one six eight dot one two zero dot one one four slash CP forward slash demo and the cool thing is I don't have to actually type in that demo dot like I, I'm just gonna go to that folder because the index file will take control from this standpoint so I'm gonna click go and what we should see is the course load up we can see here it's taken a second. There's a, uh, you know, depending on how fast your Wi-Fi connection is. But this is the beauty about this is that the iPad is testing the file directly from my computer. So here it started up. I can hit play to begin. There's my demo course. This is on an iPad. So this is the HTML5 version of this. The interaction is now loading up. You'll notice here's that interaction. I can click on each element of the pyramid and see the different content here. I mean, how cool is this for e-learning, especially a, like a reference tool on a mobile device? Um, you know, I can hit play to move on. I can hit next. I have all the controls in there that I'm used to. Uh, eventually, we'll get to the quiz, and I can start answering the quiz question. I hit next. Um, you know, hit B and hit next. Uh, looks like uh, I failed. Oh, I must have not saved my uh, right answers there, <laughs> but I attempted my quiz and, and did not do uh, very well at it. But again, this is how nice this HTML5 publishing feature is. 
Now, like I said, it's a little tricky to get that set up. There's one little gotcha too that can happen um, if you're doing it this way. If you're on Windows, the firewall might be blocking you to connect to your computer. So if you go into your control panel and you go into system and security and you go into Windows firewall, you need to allow your device to connect to your computer through the firewall. And this is really easy to do. You just have to know how to do it. So I'm going to go into allow programs. I'm going to hit change my settings. I'm going to go down and find the Apache server and just make sure that both domain and home network and if you really want you can make public as well you can allow all of those now this does introduce a little security issue that any time you know your server is running someone could probably hack in somehow if they're super guru hackers um, I'm not gonna take any liability for that but uh, there might be more secure ways to do it I'm not a good network guy so um, but this is how I allowed my device to be able to connect um, in some cases you don't have to do this step because of how your firewall is configured now there's one last thing I want to show you there is an easier way to get the device to be able to see the content you're testing okay now we're gonna back up to the point where we just published this out so ignore the fact that I went to the IP address screen we've just published the content to the demo or our, our captain you know our folder on our server there's a program that Adobe has out there. It's a free program right now called Adobe Shadow. And you can download this from labs.adobe.com. You'll see right now, it's right here. It's called Shadow. If you don't see it here, just go to the technologies and find it as well. Shadow has a couple things to install to make this happen. The first thing, if, if you just watch the video, it shows you completely how to use it. But you need to download Shadow for Windows or Mac. Then, on each of your devices, so if you have an iPad or you have an, uh, an Android tablet or a phone, you need to go to the store, you know, the iTunes store or the Google Play store, and download the Adobe Shadow app. And it's a free app. So you download it for your laptop. You download it for your device. And finally, you need to be in Google Chrome. When you open a tab in Google Chrome, there's a link to go to the Google Chrome Web Store. You need to go to the Web Store and install Shadow. So there, there, there's kind of four things to, or three things to install on your laptop, on your device, and then in Google Chrome. And I know not everyone can have Google Chrome, which is why I showed you the hard way. But if you come into here and you search for Adobe Shadow, uh, again, it's a free installable icon. You get this little icon right here. Once you get it all installed, this is the coolest thing about Adobe Shadow. Is you start it up. So you launch Adobe Shadow. And all it is is this little program that you just keep running. So I'll just kind of move it off my screen. Now notice that Adobe Shadow browser icon has turned on and if I click it it'll show you the status I can toggle it on and off so if it's if it's not blue turn it on and what I need to do is do the same thing on my devices so for example on my iPad I'm gonna start up Adobe Shadow which I downloaded from the App Store and it's going to list for you the connections. Now notice it found a computer to connect to and it's giving me a little number here that I can enter into the browser. So I'll come back to the browser and in order to connect my device I'll type in 369456 and hit enter. And this device is now connected. Here's the coolest thing about it. Watch on the iPad as I go to a different website like for example Google the iPad is gonna to go to whatever website I'm going to on my laptop which means 
if you do what I did before, when I wanted to view my my course, I just went to local host forward slash CP forward slash demo. When I did that, Adobe Shadow is going to do the same thing. Now, Adobe Shadow, because it doesn't really recognize the browser that you're using, because you're using it, it's giving me a little error here, but I'm just going to click OK, and I'm going to click Play to view my course. And you can see I can view it just like I would with anything else. Some content might not work, might be, but for the most part, it's using Safari. It's using the browser underneath the hood on the device, so that will, that will work just fine. And here's where it gets even cooler. Let me add in my phone. Again, this is an Android phone, so I'm going to start up Adobe Shadow on my Android phone. Notice I'm now being prompt for my uh, the, the little the little code to connect. Keep in mind, you only have to do this once. Once your computer recognizes the device, it won't have to do this again. So I've got 986275. I'll hit enter, and now that device is connected as well. And if I go back. To my webcam, you'll see that this device is going to pull up the same course. And again, I'm getting that little message saying that, hey, I don't think your browser is supported, but I'll just dismiss it. Now, as you can see, the course is pretty small on that screen, so it's not going to look uh, that great at the size that I made it. But the cool thing is with something like Adobe Shadow, you can test your content across multiple devices very easily. And again, it's not just for e-learning content, because any website I go to, like blog.easelsolutions.com, you'll notice my devices are going to follow me to that same URL. So this is a great thing about something like Adobe Shadow. You don't need Adobe Shadow to do what we did. You saw the first part of the video where I found my own IP address and I typed it in that way. You can do that too on each device app you know, without any problem. So hopefully this uh, got you started on how to start testing some of this mobile content. As I said, the nice thing is I can keep publishing to that same folder on my computer, refresh the browsers on my devices, and be able to continue to test uh, the e-learning the e or mobile e-learning content.